How do you see the next 20 years? We go to college together. Yeah, but Eric, you know that's not what I want. So we're going based off the first episode, the pilot episode. We're going to be going over the worst things that we got from that 90s show. Yeah. The way they dress and the haircuts, we would expect that from the 70s to the 90s, we would have seen Eric grown and come back a little different, not looking exactly the same way he did in that 70s show. This was a prominent time in the 90s when the flip came out. It was almost on every TV show, everybody's high school, movies, and this, it would have made it feel more 90s because Eric still has that 70s haircut that he had. That's something that would have helped resonate fans with the 90s a bit more. Two. Ooh, this part's dope. Dope wasn't really a term that meant cool until later on 2000s because dope, even in the 90s, was still being referred to as pot. There's no hope with dope! And another word... Bro, 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 bro! Bro was another word that didn't really come out and become popular until like the 2000s. I'm going to this party right now, bro. One of you bros could have come up and sat up with me. We're fine back here. 90s was all about saying the word dude. Pizza dude's got 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm super dude. You got it, dude. So the way they spoke really felt really 2000s. Number three. The acting from the new cast was awful. Why not? I'm gonna start a band and call it That Stupid. Nice. And I know people are gonna say casting from that 70s show in the first season was also bad. No more beer opportunities. <laughs> if my dad catches me copping beers, he'll kill me. But that doesn't give it a reason for the 90s show to do the same. Four. The jokes from the 70s cast were a little bit more sarcastic. And I visit mom's grave. So can I have the syrup now? Oh, of course. <laughs> Where the jokes seems like it was more like that type of vulgar humor. I almost nicked my nerves. This whiny vagina music is pulling me out. And I know this is being talked about now because that's been trending about the laugh track. I don't think it's necessarily the laugh track that's bothering everyone, but more how much they used it to try to make these kids look funny. I told my math teacher his wife was cheating on him. She was making out with some dude at IHOP. That's horrible. I know. IHOP. Show some class. <laughs> Seems like they had a different writer for the 90s kids. Number five. And there's a part where Leia goes hug Eric. It felt very uncomfortable and... Sorry, I was kind of a jerk. Well, you were surprisingly good at it. They just felt awkward together, Eric and Leia. They didn't feel like father and daughter at all. And same goes with Donna and Leia. They don't feel like... They might look like they're their parents, but they don't act like it. The relationship was very hard to buy. Same thing with Kelso. Again, it didn't feel like Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher were the parents of this kid. Number six. Donna does not look happy. For anybody who watched the 70s show, if you guys remember, there was an episode where Donna pictured her future and the kind of person she didn't want to be. She didn't want to be the woman that picks up after the man she's going to be with. She didn't want to be a stay-at-home mom. She wanted to be something special, something more powerful. But here it seems like Donna's consciously living a life she never wanted to live, even in high school. She had so much promise in her. She had so much promise in her. So when they mention her book, she gets brushed off, saying that they didn't even spend time to read the book. They just read the review of it, which had to hurt Donna a little bit. Kitty tells Donna to call her mom. Donna says, someday, and everything she's been through with her and their relationship. So she would feel uncomfortable calling Kitty that. She doesn't have the same strong presence, Donna, that she did. She was very more reserved, more relaxed. And what she said she didn't want to do, she's doing. She's picking up the bags for Eric. She brought the bags in. She carried the bags out. Don't worry, honey. I got it. <laughs> Again. In that moment when she says that she's proud of Leia for standing up. This is my life and I'm done letting it suck. That took courage. I'm impressed. What? Because of consciously she remembers who she used to be. There's a look in her face where it feels like she feels like she just settled. This feels weird. Number seven. The character Leia herself, who's essentially supposed to be the new main character of the show. It seems like they were trying to make her dorky. And I'm a pretty big deal in the Bay Club. That's not up for debate. But it didn't work well because she was way too rebellious to be dorky. But within a day, 
creeping through someone's window. She's thinking about what she would look like with her nose pierced. She's buying alcohol. She threatened the lady to almost close down her business. She threatened her by saying she was going to call the cops on her. She's not very compliant with what Eric and Donna tell her. They had one point where they could have made her actually feel dorky, and that's when Eric was talking about Star Wars. I'll try. Uh-uh-uh. As Master Yoda said. Yeah. I feel more dorky and nerdy, I imagine, is what they were trying to do because they kept throwing in the word dork. And you can drop the dorky disclaimer. It's implied. But she didn't seem like a dork at all. It would have felt more true to the character if she did like Star Wars and she was like Eric and was obsessed with Star Wars in that way, too. So to see her not part of that world that Eric's part of, again, was a missed opportunity. One. one of the best things about that 90s show, it keeps the original humor between the old cast. It feels like no time has passed. The cast, all well, the characters still feel genuinely like themselves. Like a lot of shows, sometimes the characters can come back feeling a little different, but characters are still hilarious, funny as ever. Um, <laughs> Mom, you're motorboating me. Number two. The shade between Eric and Red is still very much there. One of the best parts about the show it felt very on par with their relationship role and we see that here and it is hilarious i hear you got your mom's jump shot and your dad's last name three we love to see donna still writing we found out she wrote a book we love that for her it came a long way since hot donna another great one is eric's fascination with star wars red drops a line about war classic red and eric comes back with a star wars analogy this country's gonna lose the next war <laughs> Not if it's an intergalactic battle between good and evil. Four. When my parents split up, I went home, leached my hair over the washing machine, and decided that this is my life, and it's never gonna suck. When Kitty asked Donna to call her mom, Kitty says that we should call me mom. Someday. I think we can kind of feel the hurt that Donna still feels with her own relationship with her own mother in the show. That someday line, depending on how you take it, is very effective. Number five. Callie Herverta, the one who plays Leia, really was a good casting. She definitely does look like, she definitely does feel like she's the offspring of Don and Eric. Hello. Six. Where he used to reflect, Donna comes and sits down with him. They have a moment that replays a moment they had in that 70s show. Donna and Eric back and forth for a little while. If you can see a future for yourself without me, and that doesn't like break your heart, then I, I, we're not doing what I thought we were doing. And then finally getting back together for the last episode. We never knew what was going to happen if they were going to actually stay together. And now we see we did, so we are happy about that. Seven. We see Eric become Red in a full circle moment that Red got to witness himself. You're getting in that car or my foot is getting in your ass! As soon as we heard that drop, even Donna and Kitty gasped because they knew it just happened. For Red, it was like watching Eric hit his first home run. I have never been proud. Number eight which might have been the best scene of the entire episode. When Red asks one of Leia's friends, Who are you? I'm Jay. Red pauses for a second, and then comes the name drop. Jay Kelso. No. You see Red's heart drop to his stomach, and then... <laughs> you can just feel the positivity, the happiness from Ashton Kutcher in this moment being back on the set. And just classic Kelso. Michael, let's go! Kelso and Jackie. See how happy they are to be on the set again. Nine. If they're gonna be any little Kelso babies, well, I want them to be ours. You wanna have my children? Yeah. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. To see them together, because they started off the show dating, then they dated in real life, outside of the show, and now to see them together on screen as Jackie and Kelso is, is everything. Ten. When Kitty comes down with a box of games that used to be Eric's, this is the moment when we see the cast of that 70s show giving the torch to the upcoming generation of the 90s. We see that as soon as Gwen opens the bag and we can all guess what was in that bag. Your grandma just hooked us up. That was the 10 best things in the 90s show. Write down anything you would take away or add. And I'll see you guys next time. And so this